from the Pharma Tech Ops 2017 in Berlin. I'm here with Dr. Dieter Peters from the Green Tag Group. Welcome and thank you very much for taking the time. Happy to do so. First of all, could you briefly introduce yourself and tell us about your professional background? I'm a chemist by education, have international experience in the chemical and pharmaceutical industry in Europe and the Americas. And I'm now 16 years with Grünenthal and I'm uh, the responsible vice president for all the manufacturing sites in Grünenthal. In your opinion, should there be more intense cooperation between technical and operational departments? Absolutely. Uh, we have integrated our technical departments into manufacturing. Therefore, we do not call it production, we call it manufacturing. So we put them together and we are, uh, have made a very good experience. And that is also state of the art in the chemical industry since... I do not know, since the 80s, 90s. So uh, we also introduce this now in pharmaceutical industry. So the only thing which we keep separate is a technical part which is related to facility services, so not in the manufacturing areas. In which way is maintenance and manufacturing influenced by new technologies? Heavily, and we can only accomplish it if we are working closely together. And I think there is a big change ongoing in the pharmaceutical industry right now. First of all, the pharmaceutical industry has to catch up with automotive and in this, uh, chemical industry in some of the standards. But then you also hear about uh, digitalization, you hear about Industry 4.0 and all this stuff. So based on that, there's huge change and uh, I think the roles of operators, maintenance people in this context will also change and also of engineers and uh, pharmaceutical people and manufacturing people. What are major burdens when introducing new technologies to maintenance and operational departments? It's like with every uh, change you do, it's always the people. And already Machiavelli said that change means you are entering something new. So people tend to stay with the known and because they know then what they are experiencing. So it's a, first of all, it's a human factor. Very seriously, it's a human factor, the human factor, the human factor. And then you talk about, uh, do you have business cases for some of these changes which are coming? I think that is one of the major challenges because also there, by the way, you have a human factor. How courageous are you to calculate a business case and be measured on what you have promised before to achieve that? And my experience is people are too conservative on that and are then totally surprised that the benefit of the new uh, uh, way working is much higher than they anticipated before. I have seen it several times in my own career that uh, people were very much surprised. And this, by the way, it's also an issue for the company selling new technologies. They sometimes not uh, every time knowing what the benefit really is. And so they underjudge it or they uh, advise you wrongly and then you do not see the opportunities and can correct for it. So these are the major issues. This afternoon you're going to moderate a challenge mm -hmm. peers table on operational excellence in pharma manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Can you give us some information about it, what you will discuss with your peers? What I would like to discuss with my peers is exactly some of the questions you just asked me. Um, because I personally think it is crucial for uh, leaders in the pharmaceutical industry to learn from their colleagues how they tackle some of these changes, how they tackle some of these new innovative technologies, how to sell it. Because the pharmaceutical industry is a very conservative, risk-adverse um, uh, industry. And I think by sharing this experience, what did they do? And also how they are interacting with R&D, because that is also one of the elements where uh, still some companies have issues that the transfer from R&D to manufacturing is done in a proper way, not losing time and gaining all the benefits for later on. So I would like to know this and discuss with them. I would also like to see how they have won the shop floor people in operational excellence, that they actively participate in that. So that is more or less the context. Change and innovation. In your opinion, how can pharma catch up with the state-of-art management process, employee involvement and continuous improvement culture of other industries? First of all, I think the pharmaceutical industries needs to have a clear commitment from senior management, which means executive boards. If this is not recognized at that level, it will not happen. Second, they need to accelerate significantly and they need also to uh, uh, learn these new kind of skill sets to understand what does digitalization mean, what does Industry 4.0 mean. There's an education process which has to happen also on the leader level. Um, and then you have also to address this human factor and most important, 
the regulatory community. Because you have several cases where you could do easily improvements and innovation, but the regulatory burdens are so high that it takes you up to five years to make that change, while other industries can do this in half a year or a year. And that is some of the things where the regulatory community and the pharmaceutical community has to come together, on the one hand to ensure that the patient is safe, which I think is, cannot be compromised at all uh, means, but then also to find a way how can we accelerate this um, innovation because at the same time we are under cost pressure in the, all the governmental systems for health insurance. And so we need to go there and also to enable uh, new medication for uh, diseases which we cannot fight right now. What are your expectations regarding the conference and what are your impressions so far? I was very positively uh, yeah, surprised that all the contributions were meeting my expectations. Uh, some of the areas which were talked this morning already about are also areas in which we are active and working on. So this enabled also some very nice uh, discussions and contacts later on. Um, and based on that, I just explained with your questions already why I'm here. Not more to add to that, I think. Um, and my experience with these kind of conferences you are organizing is so far positive. That is the third conference I'm attending. And so far, I'm not disappointed also about this third one. Thank you very much for sharing your insights, and I hope you have a great conference. I will enjoy it. Thank, Thank you very you. much for the interview.